Steve James. Oh, good day, Steve. How are you doing? Not too bad, thanks. Good, good. I'm glad I caught you today. Hey, I just wanted to. Um, you're, you're the secretary of the Top Energy Consumers Trust, I understand. That's right. Yeah. I'm a little bit concerned about John Keys and Nationals' plan to sell off um, a major part of this asset, and want to ask you a couple of questions. Yes. Yeah, sorry. When you say this asset, you, are you talking about Top Energy? Yes. No, there's no plan to sell off Top Energy. Okay, what well, what is the what are the four? Uh, no, well, they're retailers. Um, oh, let me just think. There's Mighty River Power, uh, Meridian Energy Genesis. Uh, I can't think who the third, the fourth one is. Oh, the major is retailers. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're, oh, the, yeah. they're the, uh, the main retailers uh, that are government owned. Gotcha. So uh, the t Top Energy as a lines company uh, is owned by the community uh, yeah. through the Top Energy Consumer Trust. Uh, they, well, I guess one has to say that when the government's in session, uh, nothing's uh, untouchable, but uh, they shouldn't be able to get their hands on this. And yeah, uh, yeah so no, there's no risk to uh, to the community's investment in Top Energy. Okay, well that's pretty good. Yeah, because and when did it become a consumer's trust instead of just owned by the public? Top energy that is. Uh, well, yeah. Firstly, uh, 1993, uh, and secondly, one of the reasons uh, that this whole process was gone through was because in the days when uh, we had power boards, there was a debate about who actually owned them, um, and there was no certainty about that. It's a bit like saying who owns a council. Um, I mean, people sort of have the view that they, you know, they're there for the local people and all that sort of thing. But as far as technical ownership was concerned, it was never clear. And so, as part of the process of moving from the power board into a power company, mm. uh, we had to decide. We had to say who were going to hold the shares. And um, so that sort of forced the forced the point for everybody to, to make a decision. So in 1993, uh, when Top Energy was formed, the shares in the company were uh, effectively vested in the in the consumer trust, and they hold them on behalf of the gotcha. of the power consumer. So it was, there must have been some agreement that it was owned by the public in some form or fashion for it to end up like that, right? Well. Yeah, let's put it this way. No, nobody challenged the assumption that uh, the establishment plans that were written uh, had sort of a valid basis, and each one of those establishment plans um, took a position that said who the shares were going to be held by. I mean, uh, why the matter uh, became, what did they become? United Networks or something down on um, the North Shore in Auckland. I yeah. mean, their establishment plan said, we're going to uh, form the company and we're going to give the shares to individual power consumers. Yeah. And that's what they did. And, of course, everybody sold their shares and uh, it became owned by the Americans. And yeah. Stuff. Well, they, they, they gave them... Um, that was a... They gave them to a poor area, eh? And then they offered to buy them back straight away without any information. <laughs> well, <laughs> what they were much, worth. yeah. I mean, one, yeah. one could be fairly cynical about the uh, the whole process. Yeah, most of yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I suppose in a way it's quite good that it's held on a trust. It's just a bit strange that it's like the consumers. You know what I mean? Because it's like the owners and the consumers, yeah, we, two different things. That's right. Yeah, and it is a bit confusing for some some folk, but uh, you know that's just the way we we have to deal with it. But uh, yeah, they are one and the same uh, group of people. So it, what, of course, you end up with is a scenario where there's no driver from the shareholders for us to make additional profits uh, as you would with a, um, you know, maybe a publicly listed company or something like that. I mean, what we do, the charges uh, that we make, the sort of the way we operate the business is driven, well, we believe it is anyway, uh, in the best interests of the power consumers. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's no point in taking it out of out of your left hand pocket and sticking it in your right hand pocket. Yeah. It's still all your money. And so, what, so what's does that include the service aspect too, like making sure things are things are going well for for the consumers? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, one of the things we we went through uh, a couple of pretty bad years there about three or four years ago. Uh, service levels weren't great. We had a few storms come through, and 
you know, people were off for quite a long period of time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we've been uh, putting a lot of time and effort and spending some money um, on rebuilding parts of the system, uh, strengthening it, uh, creating additional cap- capacity and things like that. So, yeah, I mean, that's all driven by the need to deliver the best service we can for the money that we've got yeah. available uh, for the consumers. Yeah, cool, cool. Yeah, I just wanted to back one up. Like when you said no one, like, contested what the the way who who actually divided it up who who decided that it was going into a trust for the consumers uh well that was yeah, it was a bit of a convoluted process in, in the sense that that the process was started by the actually started by the labor government uh in about eighty eight or eighty nine and it was seen followed through by the national government and the rules at that time were that we had to write what was referred to as an establishment plan and that plan had to include all the details about what the uh, particular business was about but also um, included very clear information about who the shares in these new companies were going to be issued to Mm -hmm. and so we wrote that plan that plan went out to public consultation everybody had the um, had the opportunity to agree or disagree or whatever Mm. Um, i mean coming from the power boards into these power into these things yeah uh, there was huge resistance to that it was as i recall back back in the day and i've got a pretty good memory a majority that were against it yeah, well, and that was one of the reasons why we went down and we made the recommendation that, uh, well, I say we, I mean, so it was the uh, it was the old power board members and the and the new directors of the new company. But uh, I mean, that's that's why they made the recommendation in, in the establishment plan that it be held in trust. Yes, because uh, and, and this was common throughout the country, particularly in rural areas. I mean, the trust concept was developed uh, down in, Mel- in Marlborough. But uh, virtually all the rural uh, power boards, uh, as they were then, uh, adopted the the trust uh, concept. I mean, there's about 22, I think, trust-owned. Yeah. yeah, well, I, li- I like the word, you know. Hey, the trust, yeah, well, the word. Well, that's right. Yeah, there's a, there's a concept there that uh, I think fits pretty well with most people. Yeah. Now, um, what was another question here? So, so there was no public vote. We've got that established, and then, and there was no compensation paid to the public, right? That didn't, that weren't consumers. And so, how does it work when there's like, you know, because I might be a consumer one year, and then I might not be another year. So, how do these shares in this trust get assigned? And well, effectively, the the shares in the trust stay with the trust, and they are held on behalf of the consumers. At any particular point in time. Yeah. So um, you know, each year up until recently, uh, a dividend's been paid, and a, a date was set for an entitlement. So if you were a consumer and connected to the system, uh, on that date you you got the the dividend for that year. Yeah. Um, the, the the well, and, and I mean that's that just. Uh, sort of carries on. It's, it's pretty uh, straightforward yeah. in, in that sense. The the other part, which is fundamental, I guess, is that the the capital and the trust, because trust can't go beyond uh, 80 years. So uh, when the trust comes to an end, the capital, which is the shares in Top Energy, uh, will have to be distributed or some other arrangement made. Now again, the uh, the capital will be distributed to who the power consumers are at that point in time. Does that include not commercial a, consumers too, or not? Yep, yep, absolutely. I mean, we we don't uh, distinguish between uh, one consumer and another in the sense of uh, what the what the nature of them is. As far as we we are concerned, each. Uh, power consumer has a connection point, and it's that connection point which uh, determines, you know, uh, their entitlement as a power mm. consumer. Well, that's quite interesting. So you could actually have a corporate takeover of the trust just by um, consumption volume. Uh, no. Well, the thing is, nobody can take over the trust if the, the trust holds those shares and it holds them absolutely. Uh, the only way that that could be changed is if the trust decided that they 
shouldn't hold, or they didn't think they should hold them any longer, and they would have to go through a full public consultation process and explain why and what the benefits and what the drawbacks mm-hmm. were, and people would have the ability to, they wouldn't have the ability to vote as such, it wouldn't be just a, a matter of adding up the, the, the voting numbers, but they would have the uh, opportunity to make submissions, and those submissions would have to be considered by the trust before they made any final decision. Mm. You see, this is something that I sort of doesn't really gel with me because the word submitting to people that are serving us, you know, it doesn't. It should be the other way around, shouldn't it? You know, the, if the if the well, owners said, yeah, I mean, I, I understand will. what you're saying. Yeah. But, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, that that's the practical way. I mean, that you. You know, you've got five trustees. They are there to represent the people. Uh, they put a proposition out there, um, which, yeah, I mean, we use the word submission because that's the word that's in the trustees. Yeah. Uh, they have to seek submissions. But the, uh, the all the consumers would have the right to express their views, and those views would have to be considered. In the end, somebody's got to make the decision, and that's what the trustees are. Uh, yeah, are yeah. For, I know, I know. It's not, it's not it's not unique to you guys, but it's just it's no, no, sort of no, a little bit. Right. Well, pretty yeah. much all the power trusts are, are very similar. And the political situation. <laughs> well, yes, that's true. Now, yeah. Hey, I noticed uh, was it about a year back or a little bit more that there was um, some uh, debt that was taken on. Was that into the trust or by the trust? Uh, no, no, the trust doesn't carry any debt. Uh, I'm not quite sure what you're referring to. I guess it. Time okay, so that's great. Uh, I mean, Top Energy, just as like like any other commercial business, uh, carries debt. Uh, that's that's interesting because I mean, since 1993, the power prices have just gone through the roof. And there have been some studies and, and um, reports saying that it's not justified because the imports, the, the cost of the inputs hasn't really gone up. I mean, it's water flow and stuff like that. And there's a, a line maintenance charge on the, on the bill. So what do you think of that? Like, what's, How's that? Well, I, I think when, you, when you're talking about the price increases, you've got to make a clear distinction between the lines companies and the retailers, the energy retailers. Yeah. Because the retailers also typically are also generators. Okay, so um, when you look but at not necessarily numbers, generators, right? Uh, well, they don't have to be, but um, because of the the risks that are associated with retailing electricity, uh, they have a tendency to try and match their retail customer base with the amount of generation that they can they can produce themselves. Uh, there there yes, are small, a few small retailers that yeah. don't have generation, but all the big ones uh, have uh, have generation, which pretty much matches the demand that they're supplying to their customers. So they put like a, but, a, uh, a hydro dam, and then they use our wires, right, our lines, and, yeah. and in addition to that, they're just sales and marketing and admin, right? But they don't actually go and do this connection. That's right. Yeah. Yep, there's a whole <laughs> there's a whole debate about uh, what the retailers do and what they're worth and all the rest of it. But the the issue to answer your original question is that um, while I haven't looked at it in the last 12 months, certainly prior to that, uh, there was quite a lot of information around that said that the lines businesses like Top Energy, uh, and if you just take them across the country, since 19 19- 98, when we were forced to separate, we had to sell the, our energy businesses in, in those days. Um, since that time, the lines business income has pretty much tracked at CPI. So it's gone up with inflation, and that's pretty much all. The amount that you pay for your energy to your energy retailer, I can't remember what the number is, but it's gone up by six, something like 600% or something. And mm. that was the part of the industry that I think you're thinking of uh, basically came back and said, well, all the retailers are uh, overcharging, um, which was actually quite interesting, seeing that virtually all the retailers are uh, are actually Mm -hmm. government-owned. Is Contact government-owned? No, Contact is the only significant retailer that's not government-owned. That's mostly Australian, right? Contact. Yes, I think they are. Yeah. Yes, I think they are mainly these days. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, they used to be American owned, but they're not. Uh, the Americans sold out, I think. Yeah. Well, I'm, thanks for filling in the, the blanks there. Now, I, I actually had an account um, in the area, and I was a a um, a customer, so someone that uh, the trust should be looking after. Um, and I got some questions about my my account, sort of some general ones too. But um, uh, let's see. When you say your account, you mean your, your your power account? Not my power account. So I wanted to come yeah. to the trust because you guys are there. Yeah, well, I'll try and answer them if I can, but yeah, yeah. The, your power account will be with your retailer, of course. Totally, totally. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I was a consumer, yet received a letter saying that my household did not buy enough to receive a share of the dividend. Can you explain how this yeah. works? The okay. okay. pro, yeah. pro rata system would be consistent with accounting principles. Uh, right, well, the thing is, what we're, the position that that, uh, was based on was that those people who didn't contribute at least $200 because the dividend was $200 didn't contribute $200 were actually receiving back more than what they were actually paying okay now um, one year that was the position that was taken so if you didn't make the $200 you didn't get a dividend there was quite a lot of strong reaction to that and obviously the trustees uh, listened to that and so the following year and that occurred for two years if I remember rightly um, they said right well if you don't pay $200 uh, you won't get the $200 dividend but we gotcha. paid, and there was a, a threshold at the bottom of that in the sense that so it was um, a threshold $200 to, well the, the the threshold to get two hundred dollars was two hundred dollars here. Yeah. So oh, because I, I spent well over that. And line charges. Oh, line charges. Would that be your total your total bill or just oh, your line gotcha. charges? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, just for the line charges. Yeah, I mean the line charges as as a very rough sort of calculation, we would always say that your line charges make up about a third of your bill. Uh huh. Okay, so you would have been close. Well, that that answers the question anyway. So that's, um, yep. and then um, Top Energy actually disconnected my family's electricity uh, on the landlord's account without notice and with enforcement. At the time, my wife was overdue pregnant. Um, now, no monies were overdue, and it appears that my family were put on some sort of political blacklist for power. Um, Okay, um, I, I am at least uh, a little bit aware of this situation and I think it's been explained to you a number of times that Top Energy were acting as a contractor to your retailer. Okay, the retailer said that they wanted that connection point disconnected and the issue was with the retailer, it wasn't with us. But you, you, I, I thought you were saying one second ago that you, you're the consumer's trust. So surely you should you should investigate yep. the retailer's claims, no, especially if it's going to it's going to provide risk business. risk to. You have no influence family. over what the retailers do at all. Yeah. Either as a company or as a trust. So I'm I'm asking as a as a as a consumer of Top Energy if you'd investigate this for me. No, I'm, I'm sorry, I am aware that this is an issue that's been going on for a long, long time, has been investigated a number of times, and at this point, no, we won't be investigating any further. Okay. Well, you know, an electricity company demanded that my family relocate before they'd connect the property, and we had a newborn baby at the time, and it was peak holiday season. Do you think that's a bit sort of overstepping the marks of sort of the bounds of public service to, to make such a demand? That's not a, an area that I am going to get involved in a debate over at all. Yeah. Okay, that's an, that's an issue that you need to take up with the retailer if that's appropriate. Yeah. Well, Top Energy also charged six hundred and seventy-five dollars uh, to reconnect the power, even though the disconnection caused undue risk to life, was unnotified, and was not for any valid reason. In essence, I got beat up in prison. My wife was traumatised. I missed the birth of my son and had to pay for Top Energy's privilege. Do you support this extortionate practice? And you, 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 I've you got sure no you comment to make on that at all. No? Yeah. No.
Well, how come the police are acting for top energy without a court order? That's a question you'd have to ask the police. Well, how come you're calling the police without without going through to the court first? How would you? How would you that uh, got to the end of this conversation. Uh, uh, this has been covered would, a number of times. How would you like I'm it? Well aware of it. If someone accused you of owing money to my business, how would you like it if I rocked up to your house with a couple of juicy cops in tow? As I said, I think the conversation's come to an end. I don't think we're going to uh, cover anything that's of but, profit. But to you just said you, you, you're, here, you, you, you're in a position of trust, a formal position of trust to consumers, which includes providing service to them. And yet here you are saying you're not going to investigate. And Top Energy charged me $675 after a demand for my family to relocate unjustly had, had been fulfilled. I am aware of the basis of the disconnections. I'm aware of the debate that has occurred. Uh, and as I said to you, I'm not interested in discussing it any further. Is there anything that's new that you want to cover at yeah. this point? Uh -huh. So I have a written admission that non-registered electricians are working with Top Energy and that obligations as and that they have obligations as informants to the Electri Electricity Workers Registration Board. Is this standard practice? That's uh, clearly not standard practice. If, you make it, if you've got an allegation to make along those lines, then you should do so in writing and it will be responded to. Yeah. So did you know that I tried to, top, to prosecute Top Energy, but that was blocked by a district court um, gown well, wearer? Uh, I, I am not about to express an opinion in relation to a decision of a district court. Yeah, uh, it seems a bit... Okay, like, um, all right. Um, yeah. Well, thanks. We'll leave the conversation thanks. there. Thanks for your time. Okay. See you on the internet. Okay, thanks. The court. <laughs>